fourth call lab convention in Mesa, Arizona. Today is Tuesday, April the 11th. Thank you. And, and this is the Constructing Mainstream session. I am Jack Platties, and I'm going to serve as your moderator for this session and a panelist as well. Uh, and, and our panelists today, I, I, I hesitate to introduce these two guys as legends. <laughs> Okay, because usually when you think legends, you think old people. <laughs> so, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce two of the leading specialists in the art of square dance call. If you would please say hello to Mike Sikorsky and Don Beck. Now this panel is going to highlight three calls from the mainstream program and present some teaching tips. <coughs> Creative ways to use the calls and both with both standard applications. We're going to we're going to you know extend them but not get totally extreme. All right, and then take a fresh look at how you might discover new ways to use the uniqueness of these calls in our home programs. The calls we're going to look at today is scoot back, tag the line, and Dixie style to a ocean wave. I want to remind everybody that if you have some comments. Uh, or some suggestions or some feedback uh, as we do this. We want you to do this on the mic so that the people on the tape can still hear everything that's going on in today's session. So without further ado, we're going to go in reverse alphabetical order by first name. <laughs> Please say hello to Mike Sikorsky. <laughs> will be on the uh, CD that the being sold post convention. If I have three left, we passed them out earlier. So does anybody else want one? Yeah. Okay. I have one left. I'll take oh. it. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not shy, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> I think if anybody in this room is shy you're in their own business. <laughs> <laughs> okay, first part of the handout, I want to teach, I want to talk about the teaching method for Dixie style because I think uh, I've heard of it. My opinion is callers avoid teaching and using it because it's just been a difficult thing to teach over the years. So the technique that I describe in this paragraph is the one I use to teach Dixie style. So I first will put them in in-facing lines, for instance, and then, and then I'll say, we're going to learn Dixie style of an ocean wave, and I may have to tell the helpers, now this may be a little different than the way you learned it, but it'll be the same call. Get them on your team. Then, I said, I'm always going to do something to kind of flow you into this, so we're going to do this. Right and left through. And initially, during the teaching, always call right and left through from standard and facing lines. And then initially you teach them as slide the girl in front, and boy, you slide behind her. If you call C1, it, this is really the beginning of a vertical tag. They have to share the space. Put the girl in front of the guy, the boy behind. Now the next part is critical. Girls are going to give a right pull by, and with the boy, do a left touch a quarter until the boys connect. Because if the boy turned to give his left hand like it's a courtesy turn, his quarter is going to be off. So just say left touch a quarter until the boys connect. And you call it that way every, every time. So I've got some uh, choreography on this sheet, just, and just so you know how to, uh, how to work this. The column on the left says, from the corner box, which, by the way, is the new phrasing for box one four, or talking heads square through four, or sides square through four, or the equivalent. So then you call slide through, which gives you the line, right and left through, and Dixie style to the wave. Now, there are three columns. You can do either of these, but not any two or all three. So after you call the left column, you can either say, tag the line, face right, chain down the line, square through three quarters, and out and left. Now, if you did that for a squared set, initially, they're home. As with all of these, if you, you got into the corner box from a squared set. So, so the next one after the corner box slide through, right and left through Dixie style would be half tag, boys run, square through three, and element and left. That's another one. And the third one you could use, so you have three choices, are boys, after the Dixie style, boys tray, boys run left, bend the line. 
Now that's a corner line half sachet, so you can say circle left, which corrects the partnerships out and left and promenade. That's how you read what I've done there. Are there any questions at this point on what I put on this paper? Or what I just said? Okay. Now the sequences below are I'm calling it DVD, but if you look, it's the corner box, touch a quarter, girl run right, which you can flow into a reverse flutter. That's probably the way you should initially workshop reverse flutter, half sachet, is after a girl run around the boy. And then, Dixie style, you can tell them, this time we're going to put the boys in the lead, and they're going to right pull by, and left touch a quarter with the girl. Now, sometimes, quite often, that's not going to be in the initial teaching of the class, but in workshopping somewhere along the way. Uh, that's, a, that's, a, that's a fun thing to do. Remember, we're, we're here to empower the dancers. They feel more personal power when they walk out the door than when they walk in. They'll crave coming to your next dancer class. So, at this point, you may start to get questions. Well, why is it the girl one time that goes in front, and why is it the boy the other time? You'll get started with a few questions. And at that point, my style is to begin to define who the bells are and who the bows are. My current political position is I think bows and bells should be on the basic list as names only. Person identification. We tell them what a squared set is. We tell them what a line is. We tell them what an ocean wave is. We tell them what a two-faced line is. We can tell them who the partnership relationship is. And I want to define this right-hand dancer, left-hand dancer stuff, that creates brain damage. If you tell them who their partner is, and if they can find their own right hand, and their right hand is toward their partner, they are a bow. And if they can find their own left hand, and if it is toward their partner, they are a bell. So picture this, if I say from a squared set, head square through four and step you away. Everybody is a bow, so you don't play with bows or bells from ocean waves. Everybody has a right hand to their partner in the box they're in. Left waves are all bells, so the same is true there. So that's why I've got that little political position in italics, lower right. There is one that I dreamed of after this was printed, and so I would like you to write down on this sheet the one I'm about to give you. Is there anyone that does not have a pen <laughs> and doesn't have, have a brilliant two. memory? Who will remember two. it oh, once yeah. you slept? <laughs> I said I have two. Okay. Are we going to write it twice? No, I'm going to give him a pen. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So anywhere, this is going to be a six or seven column module, something like that. So you might want to just turn the paper over and write it on the back. So from any facing couples and uh, until they're really comfortable with the call, I'm suggesting to you these should be in-facing lines of some sort. So you don't want to do like head square through four and then do this module because unless they're really familiar with the call, you'll get crowding and it won't be fun. So start from lines facing in. Now here's what you write from any facing couple, any two facing couples. Pass through. Partner trade and reverse flutter. And write it that way. Partner trade and reverse flutter. If you let them finish the partner trade, they will not have the faintest idea who's going in on the reverse flutter. Timing is critical. It's partner trade and reverse flutter. Now go, and that's exactly how I say it, now go Dixie style to a wave. And typically, if, if it's a review, you're going to say girls go in. If it's the chocolate of the vanilla, you're going to say, okay, boys, you're going in this time. Left turn the girl. Then down the road, if you want a workshop, you actually can say like head star through, outside squeeze in, which is the mainstream basic way to get through a spread. And now you got boys facing in, girls facing in. So here's the deal. We go back to the facing couples. Check what you wrote. Pass through, partner trade, and reverse flutter, Dixie style to a wave. Now here's the critical part. You're going to say tag the line. And I will say all the way through. Because they should pass right shoulders. The end girl, if she steps forward, that is from the standard. 
She'll end up passing somebody left shoulders, but if you stay all the way through, they're going to run like a fullback for a touchdown, and they'll get through. And <coughs> success initially is very critical. Who cares about the shoulder pass? Fix that later. Now, after the tag the line, if you want them in the same footprint, <coughs> say face right and bend the line. If you want them in the half sachet footprint from where they began, say face left and bend the line. Would it be helpful if we demonstrated this? Yeah. Always. Would anybody like to see this demonstrated? Yeah. <laughs> Would anybody like to see it demonstrated that's afraid to raise their hand? I need two genetically correct couples up here, please. I'm genetically correct. <laughs> I've heard otherwise. <laughs> I need okay. a partner. Uh, you need to use my. Oh, sorry. I need a partner. Okay. Sorry. Genetically. Okay, we're going to put them this way so you can see what we're doing. Uh, yeah, Rob, we're good, but thank you. Okay, we're good. Okay, these are facing couples. This is a module. If you're writing down your paper. I just made this up post document creation, so it will not be on the CD either. This is when you're writing down. <coughs> Any two facing couples suggesting at least. In the, in the initial workshop, these are in facing lines, not in the end boxes like head square through four, creating the corner box. We do this. I'm going to bring it back to the same footprint. Pass through, partner trade, and reverse flutter. Girl lead Dixie style to away. Tag the line all the way through, face right, and bend the line. And why don't we practice this again? Okay. Now, let's say we've done it a couple of times, and you're sensing, you know what, I think they're ready for that other position now. Okay, so we do this. Pass through, partner trade, and reverse flutter. Girl lead Dixie style to a wave. Tag the line all the way through, and this time, face left and bend the line. And we're going to give it a go with the girl on the other side of you this time. <clears throat> so this becomes a workshop, but an easy way for you to work them through it, something you can use repeatedly, because you know where they're going to be when you get done. Pass through. Partner trade and reverse flutter. Girls go in left arm, pick him up. Now put him in the lead, Dixie style to a wave. Well, a couple people bobbled, so I'm thinking right now, we want to do the same thing again, so it's going to be the face right. Tag the line all the way through, face right, bend the line. They are still half sachet. Anytime you face right, you go the exact footprint. We're going to do it again. Pass through. Partner trade and reverse flutter. Girl go in again with a left arm. Let's put the boy in the lead again. Dixie's down the way. Left turn that hero. Girls, you connect in the middle, please. Good. Tag the line all the way through. <laughs> Now, let's just say I want to create a non-symmetric. Everybody turn and face me. Bend the line. You're gonna, now, you, now it gets weird, right? <laughs> now you have to get out. Pass through, partner trade, and reverse flutter. Who goes in the lead? Dixie style to a wave. Turn the other one in. They connect. This is weird enough, I'm going to preserve the handedness almost always. Tag the line all the way through, face right, bend the line. Now remember, we started non-symmetric, so over here we've got the boys on the end of the line, and over here we've got the boys in the middle of the line. When you've created the non-symmetric with, with face the collar, you do this. Pass the ocean. Boys run. Stop it because it's a little awkward. Bend the line and right and left through. Yeah, it, yeah, when you bend the line, it's best to say forward up the middle back. If you have to say forward up the middle back three, four, five times, it's okay. <laughs> now let's say you had said head square through four, slide through, you know, right back where we started this entire thing. So we would square through three quarters now and then. Does anybody want to see anything get any question about what I just said? What I was teaching here. Any questions? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Last, last chance to ask a question if you didn't and if you did not get 
This paper, it will be on the disc that you can purchase of all the recorded sessions. Any questions? Got one back there, Rob? Uh, come up here and identify yourself. And you're going to Do we have a second see? mic? Do we have a second mic? No. That's right. My name's Rob Trump from Spokane. What would the lead in be to that? You and I talked about this last night a little bit. To put that into a singing culture. Look at time. I, I have not timed this for a singing call figure, okay? But you can try, but to make it shorter, just in case, you would say, because my, my feeling is anytime you're going to do something a little different, you best get in as normal and easily as possible and, and get out as quickly and normally and easily as possible. So we do this head square through four, because that sings, sings well into a singing call. Slide through, which they're accustomed to. Right and left through, which they're accustomed to if they're plus dancers, because they know they're going to hear low the boat next. <laughs> so you, so you, be, you better say, before they finish the courtesy turn, because you know you're in the line open, right? You, so you're not going to call right and left through. You're going to call the head square through four, slide through. Pass through, partner trade, because they're thinking down the line. You're going to pass through and reverse flutter, Dixie style to the wave, tag the line all the way through. Now, <coughs> if they've stumbled and you're running out of time, leaders do a U turn back swing and promenade. If you've got a little extra time, but you want to make it easy, face right, ends fold, swing and promenade home. And if you want to make it a little bit different, have them face left, but have the centers fold. Whoever's folding, you want them turning to their right to swing. <coughs> you really don't want them turning to their left to swing if you get away. Did that answer your question? So it just depends on how the same call works. <coughs> I'm not trying to, but that's how I approach it to work it. And I just thumped this up a week ago, so. Oh, okay. Any other questions? And that was a good one. By the way, there are no bad questions. Okay. Yes, yes, my time's up. Thank you. Yes, All right. Thank you, Mike. How about a nice hand for Mike? Very good. All right. Well, good timing here. Uh, now, if you would please, uh, for your listening pleasure, how about a nice hand to the infamous Don? <laughs>
as a quick teaching hint I found over the years, I tell dancers to set, face the center of their line and they're busy looking all around. I find I tell them to face the far end of your line. And that seems to sink in much more easily with them. They can catch that pretty quickly. quickly can um, so you can call it, let's say dancer lines of four, you can call tag the line from two face lines. Lines facing in, lines facing out, three and one lines. Um, good way to un unmess that up. Uh, and again, tidal wave situations and end lines, but a little more difficult there. Um, do we have two, two couples up here? Let's have the heads 
um, step forward, face your corner. Right and left through, ear to the left. So we all know how to get home from this wheel and deal or Ferris wheel pass through. A very simple zero is tag the line face right twice. Let's do it. Tag the line, face right, tag the line, face right, and we're we're back to where we were. Um two wheel and deal. Start through. And this is um from a corner line, or any line actually, but do a pass through, tag the line in. Pass through, tag the line in. And you've got yourself a zero. And it's not even, you know, it's a good teaching tool. And it's um, geographically, positionally zeros as well as just zeroing out who's with whom. Um, square your set, I guess. This is a, a quick sequence that's a, a, a get out of sorts. Let's have the heads go right and left through, past the ocean. I thought of this kind of late last night, I hope it works. Uh, <laughs> recycle and veer to the left. Uh, geez, that's not what I was thinking of. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> well, I, I, I was imagining it doing as couples as couples extend to make two face lines. You're not going to do that otherwise. Tag, tag the line, face left, and promenade home. Um, But that as couples extend isn't quite going to fit in this program. <laughs> but you guys seem to know it. I'm proud of you. <laughs> uh, a typical sing and fall thing, I think. Um, heads promenade calf while the sides scar through. Pass through. Dose do. That's to make the workout timing wise. Scar through. Um, forward and back. More timing. Um, pass through and tag the line. Leaders, you turn back, swing and promenade. <laughs> Go back and remake the square, get your urge the partner back. <laughs> no, I've been using it for years. It's the one that doesn't follow the directions of quarter, half, three quarter. Remake the square. Another singing call that I've heard on so many records. Um, but it's still pretty nice. Is head square through. Let me know if you've heard this. Um, Dose to Swing through. Men run. Everybody knows what's coming. Tag the line. Clover leaf. Women square through three. Swing your corner. And remake your square. <laughs> <laughs> that works from any formation. It's really versatile. Um, <coughs> whoops. So that's your basic stuff. One of the things I really like about this call, again, as I said, a sight caller's tool or a choreographic creating tool, is that it changes. It can make couples from normal to half sachet and vice versa. Let's have the heads pair off. Start through. I'm being quick. Um, if you're a normal couple, raise the hand between you and your partner. We've got three out of four. Huh? If you're a normal. rule is normal. Man on the left, a woman on the right. Man's position on the left. And I'm going to ask you to do this frequently so that if you're half sachet, the, the group can see. Who is and who isn't. So right now everybody's normal. Pass through, tag the line and face in. If you're a normal couple, raise your hand. And you're not, you're all half that shape. <laughs> By right, the very center couples could, but I really don't want to talk to you guys about that. Um, so normal couples became half that shape. Pass through, tag the line and face in. 
half size shape couples, normal couples, raise your hands, your center hands, so we're all normal again. Okay, but if we want to mix things up, pass through, tag the line, and face right. Normal couples, raise your hand. That normalized left two normal and sashayed the other two. Um, tag the line and face right. That'll normalize the other two. Normal couples, right? The other right. Yeah, no, it's two face lines. Yeah, that's what I thought. Do you turn back? Yeah. Um, so we have the other two are normal, and the and two of them are not. Let's say I'm a site caller and I want to start resolving, and I can't handle some mixed and some not. Bend the line, pass through, tag the line, and face in. Normal couples, raise your hand. Um, I guess I didn't do it right. Okay. <laughs> Pass through, tag the line, face right. Okay, we're all normalized now. So we went from some half sashayed to some not to a whole mixed up of things. You can do an awful lot of going back and forth. Why is this thing going away here? Um, One of the, mm, let's see, I want to mention a few other things, but I'll do that with you sitting, but don't sit yet. I just don't want to do a couple things, square your set so I don't have to resolve. Um, <laughs> heads, heads, heads pair off and start through. Um, watch either one half or the other. Years ago, I came up with the fact that, gee, oh, and, and, oh one of the things I forgot to mention, Tag the line works when the centers are either facing the same direction or if they have right shoulders joined. It's legal if they have left shoulders joined, but there's an awful lot of awkward backing up and turning to get that right shoulder passed through. So it's highly not recommended. Um, and I thought, of, gee, it works nicely from left-handed ways because some people are facing the wrong way, but the centers have right shoulders joined. And I thought of what Mike did with Dixie style to a wave and then tag the line. And I used it once and I didn't like how much twisting around the end people had to do. You guys dancing for Mike didn't have any adjusting problems at all. You did it beautifully. But I've always avoided it. I just want to see what it looks like. Let's right and left through. Lady lead Dixie style to a wave. Tag the line. Watch the ladies. They they have to move over to get that right shoulder pass. Again, you guys adjust beautifully. Use your own judgment as to whether that's a problem or not. Um, it is proper. Hmm? It is proper. It is proper, yes. It's because, legal. Because tag the line is uh, the, the You stuff need a microphone. Now. Wait, 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 can we get you on the mic? Uh, so you remember everything you said at this point? Repeat it. <laughs> and your name. Name and location. And state your name and location. Name, rank, and serial number. My name is Al Stevens. I'm from uh, Montgomery, Alabama. But the uh, the recent definition change to tag the line authorizes it from general lines, which includes ocean waves. However, left-handed ocean waves are preferred over right-handed ocean waves. I, I agree with that fully, Al, but I'm just saying some ocean waves and some getting into it yeah. are a little more awkward and maybe, I mean, a lot of stuff is legal that can be very awkward and should be avoided just because of body flow and, and position. And to me, there was a little bit too much of an offset for the women in the direction they were turning because of the Dixie style and having to adjust back to move to the right hand. What I do is tell the girls to follow the boys. <laughs> It's legal, it's your judgment, you know, I'll use start through here to the left on occasion because it fits what I need, but very rarely. Mike, you have a comment? Uh, yeah, Mike Sikorsky. Yeah. My name was mentioned, so I'll defend myself here. <laughs> <laughs> While I agree that tag the line should never be called when the centers are holding left hands because the turn is much too abrupt, I feel on Dixie style to a wave, it's the very same turn that ends would do on almost any other tag the line. They have the room to do it, and if you look at the way the left-hand wave is set up, 
they are actually offset backwards just slightly. They are not shoulder to shoulder as in diagrams, which means all they have to do is turn and go. Once they've done it a couple of times, they will they will continue to do that. Now, that's my experience. The only time it becomes an awkward turn is if you're always calling, take a peek, trade the weight, and they're taking a step forward, which means you really should try to call something else once in a while. Can you remake the square? I, I want to, well, I have to like, <coughs> say a quick thing, an addition on Dixie style to the way it's a really nice get out I use that sometimes works and sometimes doesn't. And the doesn't part is when there's a crowded square, but when you have plenty of room like you guys have, there's no problem. You have to square through. So it starts from a zero box. You guys ought to be comfortable with that. Don't do it yet. We're gonna, from here, we're gonna do a right and left through in Dixie style. Don't do it yet. We're gonna do a right and left through in Dixie style to wave. That Dixie style to wave gets crowded, but it's worth it if you have the room to have you. And it leads into it because we're doing a normal Dixie style to wave. You can remember it starts from a zero box. Do a right and left through. Lady lead, Dixie style to a wave. Fan the top. Boys three quarter, ladies move up. Do an L and left. That's where you're set. Um, you can get most slurs through that. <laughs> it is kind of surprising. Um, you guys can sit down. I appreciate your help. Um, just have a little bit more to say about tag the lines. Um, they kind of, a, a, as I said, a lot of versatility. There's things that we use at mainstream called half tag, um, but I didn't talk about it here because, um, because, <laughs> because it's a different call. But I just want to give you a, some of you aren't even aware of, of some of the background of it. You know, we use the call extend, but it used to be called extend the tag. What we did. On a tag the line when you face in, there are many different positions. You move up till the first people join right hands. Then you move up till everybody joins right. Then you, which is a half tag. Um, then you, the first moving up till they join right hands is a quarter tag. And we know what a quarter tag formation is, heads past the ocean. Um, they move up till the trailers join right hands and stop there, couples facing out and away in the middle. That's a three-quarter tag the line. Use it up slightly above this. Then if you get into advanced, there's, instead of in, out, left, or right, there's zigzag, where leaders turn right and trailers turn left, and zag, zig, and the other way. There's one call in that family that's, to my knowledge, not on any program that I go up to. <laughs> and I wish it was. I, it's really simple, and I kind of wish that it had been adapted, adopted, um, and it goes by two different names. It's called either finish the tag or complete the tag. It's from any double pass through, quarter tag, half tag, parallel waves, three quarter tag. You just continue finishing your tag line, finish your double pass through. Everybody walks straight ahead until the trailers have passed each other. Something that everybody can get through easily had you been out left or right. But it hasn't been accepted, and who needs it, because we have too much stuff as it is anyway. <laughs> Any questions on anything we've had so far? Whoops, I'm 53 seconds over. Forget it, save it for the question and answer period. <laughs> Any questions? Thanks, guys. So what we're going to do before we, uh, before I start on my end of it, is uh, let you know we're running on pretty good timing. Uh, we're done with about 10 minutes or so left over. Uh, what I was hoping we would do is entertain some tips and some things that you guys might have uh, that could help everybody, and we'll put that on the mic as well. How about a nice hand, Mr. Don Beck? Thank you. Thank you. All right, so uh, when I first uh, got asked to do this and I looked to see who the panelists were, I realized that I was going to be working with some, some pretty knowledgeable guys and, and uh, they were going to come in exactly what they did, giving us really uh, great choreography that we could use. So I decided I was going to take my portion of the constructing mainstream uh, from a from, from very basic level, from a teaching standpoint, from, as I teach my lesson classes. Okay, and uh, if you'll see on my handout uh, that uh, I threw in a few uh, sample 
um, extended applications on the second page, and then if you flip it over on the last page, I just move in a couple of normal uh, easy get outs. Okay, just to give you an example. But I can tell you right now, uh, if you want to see some really cool stuff, uh, you know, I'm sure there's plenty of websites out there, but I, I really like going to Vic Cedar's website. He's got a ton of material from all this different, different left-handed, fractionalized, quarter tag, Alamo ring, uh, corner lines, corner get out. So you, you, can, you can get all that stuff off of there. There's a lot of neat stuff on that uh, when it comes to the call scoop back. So anyway, I want to, I want to preface the beginning of the teaching by remembering, you know, I love to call it up definitions uh, as a caller, okay? And, and all of us in the room as callers, we, we see the definitions and we can, we can understand the definitions. But we sometimes forget that the new dancer is learning an entire new language, okay? And they're learning an entire new language. They haven't heard any of these terms, words. Uh, it's all unfamiliar to them. So, so for example, if, if we're using in-facers or out-facers or leaders or trailers or things like that, uh, in week three of our lesson class or week five of our lesson class, in week seven, they haven't a clue what those terms mean anymore. I mean, you know, you got to remember, retention is very low um, when, you're, when you're lecturing and things like that. So, so we have to remember and we have to take the definitions and kind of make them normal. For the for the average dancer, so so I'm not going to sit here and read the whole definition of scoot back, but you'll you'll see it's very very surgical, and what you want to do is turn it over and, and make it for the layman, okay? <coughs> the la the last part of the definition where it shows the, the timing or the styling, that's that's the key to this definition. The styling on the on the call scoot back is generally a turn through and a fold. That would be the start. So what I'm going to do, all right, I, and I generally stay, you know, I've got my teaching plan up here. I generally stay in the teaching order when I teach mainstream. I figured it was a whole bunch of smarter people that put this list together than me. So why change, okay? So if you look at your normal teaching, your, your, your suggested teaching order, um, usually I teach turn through, and I'm, I'm going to give you an example. This year, I'm in the middle of my class now. On May the 2nd, I'll be teaching turn through. Okay. Well, on May the, I mean on June the 13th, I'll be teaching scoot back. All right. So what happens when you're teaching classes? We all know that we have less time in our classes, and you know we're cramming in uh, what we used to do in three hours and two hours now, if you think about that. And uh, so sometimes I might teach turn through on May 2nd, and I might use it again on May 9th. But on May 16th, I'll start concentrating on the new calls I'm teaching, and that turn through gets, you know, it loses it. So what I'll do is I'll sit there, and I'll, each week I sit there and look ahead what I'm going to teach two weeks from now. And that particular night, I'm going to focus some of the calls that is going to facilitate me teaching what I'm teaching two weeks from now. So maybe on, on, on May 16th, or excuse me, yeah, May 16th or May 23rd, I'm going to start using a lot more turn throughs again. All right, I'm, I dropped, dropped it for a few weeks, but now I'm going to start using a lot more. And then, and then the week before I teach scoot back, I teach folds. So that's going to be nice and fresh in the dancers' minds. So then when it comes time to teach scoot back, and I use the, the uh, styling tips of, 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 of the turn through and of the fold, dancers fall in place a lot easier. Okay, And I explain to them that, you know, we, we talk about... Uh, we got leaders and trailers or in facers and out facers. I, I won't go into a lot of detail on that, but I'll give them at this time. So far, I've only used in facers and out facers on most of the calls, like when we did walk and dodge, things like that. But now I'm going to use the term leader and trailer and try to get them to start understanding that in the ocean wave or a circulate box, that we have a leader and a trailer. Because later on down the road, they're going to need to know those terms. So you might as well start getting it into their head a little bit. So, so as I talk about in-facers, I'll also say you're also the trailer. So in-facers or trailer, you're going to do the turn-through portion, okay? And then I'll say leaders or out-facers, you're going to do the fold portion. A lot of times the way I'll teach it is I'll have the out-facer or the leader to do a fold in behind the in-facer. Then I'll have the in-facer move forward, do the turn-through, walk out while the leader moves up a little bit, and then you'll meet. I'll explain to the dancers that the ending result is nothing more than a simple trade. 
All right? So you're going to end, start and end with that same person that you have now. And, and I'll generally teach it from a, a circular box, a head square through four, touch a quarter. That's where we're going to start. I'll work on the first night of teaching. I'll use all boys being leaders, and I'll use girls being leaders. I don't think we do that enough of that. It is pretty easy. You know, you can make jokes about it too, you know, like in facers or, you know, those that are doing the arm turn. You know, you're scooting, or you're the hooker, you know, that kind of thing. You know, when it comes time for the girls, you say, you're the arm turner, that kind of thing. You know, kind of make a joke about it, make it fun. And then, and then as, as the weeks progress, I have them doing uh, all the men doing the scoot back, all the women doing the scoot back on week one, and maybe week two, I'll start extending it a little bit more. And usually week two is my last week of mainstream because that's, uh, that's the week we're going to teach recycle. So we're still going to use that scoot back a lot. And then I'll have it doing mixed sexes. Boy and girl doing the arm turn. Boy and girl doing the fold. Um, and I'll do that for a while. And then after that, it might be, you know, in a month or two later, then I'll start using a little bit more extended type applications. Uh, I generally don't do a lot of left-handed stuff in the new dancer lessons. Okay, I do some, especially when we start teaching Dixie style to a wave. That's when a lot of the <coughs> left-handed stuff starts starts becoming a little bit uh, prevalent to use with the dancers. And then and, and I'll, I'll, I'll fuse it in slowly, okay? Um, but uh, I'll wait until maybe it's workshop time, because when we run our classes, once we complete, get through mainstream, then we're gonna workshop for several weeks before we even consider doing clubs. And those are the times where I'm gonna start extending the applications a little bit. I'll use left-handed first stuff, stuff first. Then I might even turn around and uh, start doing it from quarter tack. Teach and scoot back from quarter tack. You'd be surprised how many people are surprised the first time you call a scoot back from a quarter tag and plus dance. And these people have been dancing for three or four years. We don't use that enough. Um, and one of the reasons we don't use it enough because there's really not a lot of stuff to do afterwards when you're talking mainstream and maybe even baby plus. There's not a lot of stuff. What can you do? Scoot back from a quarter tag and then the outside trade or face right or face left. I mean, there's not a lot of stuff. You know, once you go into the higher levels, the stuff gets a little bit easier and there's a lot of other things you can do. So, so that's why a lot of callers probably hesitate from doing a lot of scoot back from a quarter tag. But uh, there is a lot of material out there and you can, you can come up with some neat stuff. Um, and then uh, I allow the dancers, like I said, to get comfortable many weeks before I start using any of that quarter tag. Alamo ring. You ever done a scoot back from Alamo ring? It's pretty cool. You have to identify, you know, original heads, scoot back, or original sides, scoot back, or whatever the case may be. Um, but it works out pretty nice. Uh, nice little gimmick is you say the original heads scoot back, the original sides scoot back, and then the original boys run, something of that nature. And then uh, you can get right back to a normal circle. Um, using it from uh, left handed, or oh, fractionalized. That's another one, you know, that's a slippery slope with early dancers. But that's, that makes for great workshop material if you're doing a dance or a guest dance somewhere, that kind of thing. The scoot back once and a half, which, you know, you start calling, uh, see what it becomes another call. But, uh, but you can play around with it. There's a lot of stuff you can fractionalize. Um, as far as boot back is concerned, those are my little simple uh, uh, tips on teaching. Uh, just remember that uh, you know when you when you're doing this. Oh, here's another great thing. Make sure you emphasize that scoot back is not arm turn by the right. Okay, even though we're doing the turn through, and you when you first start to do a turn through, when it's first taught, the turn through is always right handed, less designated as a left turn through. Remember to emphasize that we're using inside arms. Okay, uh, we're using uh, the inside arms of the box. You want to make sure you emphasize that. That's probably going to be new terminology to them, and they're probably going to like think that through a few times. Another thing you want to make sure you don't. Uh, allow them to get started on its crossing, crossing hands. Uh, and, and one of the reasons people tend to cross hands is because I probably told them several times early on in the lesson class that, well, we'll always make sure you don't use two right hands in a row, or I'll make sure you don't use two left hands in a row, and then I teach them scoot back, and we're using three rights in a row. If you 
you think about it. Uh, so you want to make sure you don't, you, you don't let them start crossing hands and getting that habit right away. Uh, explain to them the reason it's okay now to use those two rights in a row or, or two lefts in a row, depending on the, um, the, the, the box, is because we have a, a beat or two of music in between the use of using both those hands. Uh, and uh, for example, if I was to uh, touch a quarter, scoop back, cast off three, I just use right hand in a row all day long, if you think about it. Uh, but each time we use that, we had a little beat, of, a beat or two of music in between, so it was okay to, to, uh, to use those right hands in the row like that. So make sure you under, they understand that. Um, outside of that, that pretty much covers scoop back. Any questions on scoop back? On the definition? Pretty, pretty easy call to teach. Hold on a second. Uh, Silicon Valley, you keep using the word fold, and most of the times I hear people talking about scoop back, they talk about it being a run, and that's also what it says in the definition, so I was wondering why you do it that way. Well, I actually don't. I, I teach a little bit differently. Uh, when I'm teaching it, I, 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 use the, I use fold the week before, that's the week before. It, it gives them that body, you get that, you get that muscle memory going on. Okay? And, 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 and you got some muscle memory. But what, what I generally teach is I tell them they're running into the spot or flipping. And this is the first time, this is, when I'm teaching scoop back, this is the first time that they probably heard the word flip. I might have used it a little bit when I taught them how to, boys run from an ocean wave, girls run from an ocean wave, things like that. But I'm, I'm telling them to flip into that spot. It's going to feel like a fold. Remember, that was only a styling hint. So the fold is a styling hint because it gives you that muscle memory. And then I'll tell them you're flipping into that vacated spot or you're, or you're falling into it like a run. So, exactly. Thank you. Al Stevens, uh, Alabama. I avoid using uh, run because a run technically has <coughs> two people doing actions. Absolutely. You have a person that, that is doing the actual walking around, then you have somebody sliding. <coughs> so I avoid that. I, I, I use flip because uh, most dancers are going to probably be talked into or coerced into going to plus. <laughs> and that'll give them a chance. Absolutely. That's the same reason I use the term flip a lot because. Uh, uh, that's the same reason I use the term flip a lot as well, because again, just like I said, when I I'm going to teach scoot back, I'm going to look and see a couple of weeks before, and I'm going to start using the term flip. You know, I'm going to preface the call early on. So when I start talking flip, and this is when I start talking flip is when I'm doing scoot back, I'm prefacing something that you know we're probably going to end up teaching down the road, right? Just as a point of clarification, uh, the definition says outfacer run, in other words, do your part. Flip does coincide with that at the time. So, and so my opinion is if you want to say flip for the outfacer on the scoop back, that is perfectly acceptable. What is not acceptable at all is to teach scoop back as a turn through. It should never be described as a turn through, never. And the reason is a turn through is done with the person you are directly facing. And a scoot back is done with the person you are offset from. Now, I agree with what Don said when he whispered in my ear. It did not go through and out the other side. <laughs> it did not. He, he says he teaches it extend, trade, extend. And I find that works with some people. Other people, it's like, Guys, do you see that other boy over there? Use this inside arm, use his right hand this time. Go arm turn in and come back and take her spot. Now he's already thinking about where he's gonna end up. I find that the extend, trade, extend for some dancers is above their level of comprehension at the time we teach stupid. May I throw in a comment? Just as another thought of teach, the way of teaching it. I don't strictly say extend, trade, extend. I have them extend. And I say, now I'm going to have you trade. The centers have somebody by their right hand in this case. The outsides make believe you do. 
you know, depending on the group, I might say fan of if necessary. But and by doing that, it takes in left-handed or right-handed. It takes in the quarter tag formation. Um, it takes in meeting the opposite sex in the middle instead of just same sex. And it's a great way to, once you talk them through that initially, to cue it while it's happening, extend, trade, extend, and that brings back some of their teaching. Absolutely. And, 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 and everything <clears throat> leads into the correct body flow yeah. and the correct definition. Uh, and just like Mike said, the definition doesn't say we're going to do the turn for the styling hint says we're going to do an action similar to turn through. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to you know start using that turn through a week or two before I teach. It's called scoop back. But when I actually teach it, I make sure we the dancers understand that the lead or excuse me the trailing dancer or the in facing dancer is going to move forward, turn half, and then they're going to return to the footsteps of the person that was their partner in the box. They're going to return back to those footsteps. If we did a normal turn through, the folks doing the arm turn would end up back to back. Agreed? So that's that's why you don't want to confuse the dancers saying you're doing a turn through. They're not doing a turn through. They're doing a, a muscle memory feel of turn through. <coughs> and that's what they mean by the styling tips. Good stuff. Anybody else? So we got about 12 minutes. And uh, what I'd like to do is uh, entertain from the floor some of the teaching tips that you folks might have when you're doing any of the Dixie style, the scoot back, or attack the line. And, and I'm going to ask y'all a question. Here's something when I first started calling, I was scared of tag the line. Okay? And, and, and Don kind of started getting into it. Because I, as a new caller, all right, and I don't know how many new callers we have in the room, but as a new caller, the reason it scared me, it was okay if I wrote material, because I did a lot of that, you know, when I first started calling. But when I started doing the extemporaneous calling, I realized that tag the line was like the devil square dance call for me, okay? <laughs> because if I tag the line face in, then I've got half my square normal and half my square abnormal. And, uh, and, and so I, I would panic on how to get it back to normal. Uh, and, and Don kind of uh, talked about when you tag the line, if you face right or left, that's going to somehow get us back to the normal. So if there's anybody else got some suggestions on how they're using tag the line, that would be great because there's, there's, there's a lot of good choreography there and it would help some of the newer callers not be so scared of the call tag the line. Anybody? Well, this is a lively group this morning. <laughs> we'll be first in the coffee line. Yeah, you got that one. I'd like to thank you all for not leaving early. <laughs> <laughs> but once again, oh, did you have a question? Yeah, what did we come to? My name is Gloria Vivier from Massachusetts, and uh, I just wanted to talk about Dixie to a wave, and I try to simplify the movements for my dancers so they can kind of understand it. So basically I tell the right hand dancer, or the girl typically when we're teaching, I say you're going to do two arm turns. You're going to turn with the lady across from you by the right. Gentlemen just quarter in and extend your left hand to the lady and trade. So I try to bring it down to just two arm turns so they can understand what the movement is not necessarily what the definition is, and then I, you know, reinforce it the definition that way. Yes. I want to, re I want to comment on your topic. Okay. okay. And um, <clears throat> the other question I want to ask everybody because I've had this in my head. It's on scoop backs. If you have uh, an ocean wave, two, you know, two line ocean wave setup, and you're doing a scoop back, I tell them to. The hand they're holding with their partner, the in-facer, I say, point at the person that you're that you're looking at on the diagonal. You're going to go in and, and connect those hands and trade, and then come back out. And I I've been telling the the out-facer to just turn around and slide slightly to the side, get out of the way. That way, uh, I'm not using like fools, which sometimes they, they get confused with the t things. And I'm not saying I'm right, I'm just trying to bring it down to a really basic what they're going to actually be doing when they're moving. And I wanted to ask a question. 
if you have ocean waves, and if I say just the end dancers on the wave, the end facers, can you do the scoot back from that position? So the in facers on a diagonal would turn and go out to the other end of their ocean wave. The, the person out facer on the outside of the ocean wave would circulate to the other end of the wave. Is that legal? I want to know. I'll let you answer the scoot back question or somebody else. Um, I want to, because that was not my subject. My subject was, I want to address her Dixie style comment. Okay. Okay. When you say in the initial teach, put the girl in the lead, I am fully in support of that on the initial teach. I'm fully in support of put the girl in the lead. I've not heard the idea before of girls, when you are the leader in the, on this call, you do two arm turns. I think that's a good teaching technique. I've not heard that one before. What I would like to caution everybody against is I am totally, personally, completely opposed to using the word trade in the teaching of Dixie style. You are confusing them on one of the five most important calls in the basic and mainstream program. A trade can only be done with someone who your shoulder is pointed towards. That means you have to be in a wave or a line and your shoulder's pointed to somebody. I wish I had a nickel for every time I told those, those after every call, like a gimmick, after every call, tra trade with your original partner if you can. And they'll literally do a call and find their original partner on the other side of the square and trade with them because they don't understand that a trade must and can only be done with someone your shoulder is pointed towards. So I would say yes to the arm turns, but please don't use the word trade in teaching Dixie style. Can I uh, address your term or your question about the scoop back? Uh, if you didn't understand what she said, I think you were saying from maybe like a, uh, an ocean wave, you can have the diagonals do the scoop back. If, I don't know, might want to see if we've got some really high level problems in here and have some city point and C2 and things like that. But from a mainstream standpoint, if you look at the definition, okay, if you look at the definition, the starting formation is a box circulate or a quarter tag, okay? And a box circulate, for example, would be head square through four, touch a quarter. There's your box circulate. So from from that, from reading the definition like there, I don't think you can legally do it. Okay. However, it can be done. I like to use it as like a given call, that kind of thing, uh, during 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 the dance. But you really have to talk the dancers through it. Okay. You can't expect them to know that. That's the way I look at it. I have a question, Vivian. When you for, I still don't know what you meant. When you were, did you mean that you wanted all the ends yes. around the outside to do a scoot back? Because I was picturing the end facing in and the adjacent center diagonally doing a scoot back. Okay, so if I didn't understand it, there's a good chance that 10% of the dancers wouldn't either. Be, be right. sure that you're making, making that part clear. Um, and either is a, an interesting modification You've got to let them know that it's not standard, but we're talking you through it to make it kind of fun to dance. Yeah. Al Stevens again. Uh, could you not do the ends only? Do your part and point out at that at, at that time that you have an in facing end and you have an out facing end. The, the problem is if you question if you think about it as an extend you move straight ahead and turn the person the in faces turning the person you meet move straight ahead turn the person you meet by the right they've got to move diagonally um, you know it's, it's ends, ends concentric to it you know yeah. but we're not going to get into that right so so no if you said ends do your part their part would be working with the person in their diagonal in their in their box circle, not with that far end over there. But in, what I would do is I would identify ends facing in, you're going to do the in facing part, ends facing out, you're going to do the out facing part. You've got a big box around the set, ignore the centers and do a scoot back. That's the way I, I would use it as a, as, as, as a given back back. The part I'm arguing with is do your part. That is not correct. Right. You can describe it as a gimmick. You 
can describe yeah. it as a fun thing we're going to do differently. Hey, boys, you scoot over there. It becomes a modification. If you get the dancers through it, go for it. They'll have fun with it. But it's not a do your part. Exactly. And here's another thing. When you have two ocean waves, it's not. Uh, it's kind of cool to just make sure you have, say identify the four center box because you get the center box right, and have them do a scoot back every once in a while, uh, rather than a, a swing through the boys trade. How about a swing through the boys scoot back? If you get the same effect and, and you give the dancers a little bit more of an extended type thing. Jack, you know that brings up a good thing. If Vivian wanted to do that thing, you do the center four scoot back, and now you say the other four. You're working around the outside or through the middle, and, and they probably will pick it up pretty quickly. Absolutely, and they'll give you a variety of the dance. Does somebody else have a question? That was a great question. Brian! Oh yeah, we should have. <laughs> Brian! Can I get a, a box of four on this floor? <laughs> Brian Clark from Vancouver, Canada. Can I get a box of four on the floor? <laughs> Boys, girls, <Berlin. laughs> just a box. Okay. Uh, can I have you guys a box of four, right hand box of four? Right? Perfect. In your box of four, circulate once. Okay, do another box circulate. Okay, we're going to do a box circulate, but the people who are crossing across the center, I want you to, when you meet, I want you to trade with each other. Go. Do a box circulate, you can trade. I've now explained scoot back without telling them anything about a definition. Okay, I've been giving them the feeling for the call without telling anybody anything other than saying, those who meet in the middle, I want you to trade as you go by. Okay, do your box circulate and have the centers trade as you go by. Whoops, no. He started walking before I finished talking. Okay, okay so from now, box circulate, go. Okay, so the people who are facing in, as you're doing the box circulate, when you meet, I want you to trade as you go by. So do your box circulate, go, but trade as you go by. Okay, so now when I do that, all I'm doing is I'm walking them through how it feels, and then I will explain to them what the definition is so that they understand what their part is. So the people who are facing out, they're going to do their part of a box circulate. The people facing in are going to extend, trade, and extend. You're now done the call. I'm not telling them to do a run. I'm not telling them to do anything that's illegal. I'm telling them to do all calls that are perfectly on their list and perfectly uh, capable for them at that, at that time. Do you then just come back and say, let's put a name on it? Yes. Yes. <laughs> For the tape. Brian said yes. And that's a great, that, that was a great hint. Yeah. Uh, you guys should write that one out. It's a perfect hint. I made it. All right, we got about six more minutes, or three if we want to be first in the coffee line. <laughs> <laughs> Twelve to three. Great. <laughs> My name is Larry Clark from Kennewick, Washington. I'll stick my neck out. Um, typically, when uh, we run mainstream classes, do two a year. We get out to about 15 a week. So when we get to week 12, we we pretty much done the whole list, and I do follow the teaching order. Then I start doing stuff with couples because typically the dancers don't understand that couples can do the same things as single dancers. And I'm just kind of curious the way you think about couples scoot back and some of these other things. Um, just at that point, I would say that, that ever before like week 10 or 12, and depending on the class. Can I answer first? Yes. I, I wouldn't, personally, because because it's an advanced concept. Right. And and so I wouldn't use it in my mainstream. I might use it as a gimmick at a dance. Well, no, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, something like that. You know, because it's easily caught on to right. and, and stuff like that. But I would not uh, make that a point of teaching as I'm, as I'm teaching my workshops and things like that. But, yeah, great question. Uh, can I make one comment on maybe we'll get back to Dixie style for a minute? One of the things that I do uh, to uh, preface Dixie style uh, before I teach it is, as I said, I look a couple weeks ahead. So what I'm going to do a couple weeks ahead, I'm going to do simple right and left throughs and put the lady in the lead and do double pass through and stuff like that. I never call lady in the lead Dixie style to a wave, lady in the lead flutter wheel. I never do that. Uh, I'll call Dixie style to a wave, I'll call flutter wheel, because what happens, we taught flutter wheel, and they've been dancing it for a long time, because we taught it back in our basic program, and they've been dancing it for a long time, and if we're using that lady in the lead, flutter wheel, then when it comes time to teach Dixie style, half my people are, I, it's just like killing them to change that muscle memory from the flutter wheel to the Dixie style, because it's totally 
obstacle. Yeah, yeah good comment. Uh, and as an addition to that, if you want to start playing with it initially, sometimes a singing call is the best place to introduce that sort of thing initially. So that would be head square through four, slide through, right left through, and now put the girl in the lead, let's double pass through. Now hopefully you've never said put the girl in the lead and flutter wheel both. No. Please, never. heaven forbid. Once you've done the double pass through, because I'm telling you, the first time you call that, it's going to look like people running for a touchdown in the Super Bowl, you know, trying to get through. Have the girls you turn back swinger and promenade home. Okay, so the next time after the double pass through, you can face right. And since the girls are in the lead, you can have the girls fold swing and promenade home. If you've got the time after the double pass through, you can say clover leaf, putting the girls in the middle. Now the girls you turn back swinger and promenade home. Just ways to introduce what you said. Absolutely. All right, let's do one more. Do, from Don. I have two quick comments. Something I forgot to say about tag the line. A lot of us do left, right, in or out. You can leave that off. Just have the leaders turn back. Everybody clover leave. If you're using tag the line at a plus dance, track two afterwards. Don't forget the possibilities of, of just not using in or out, left or right. The other is just a quick aside on, on the couple scoot back, as couples scoot back. Um, when I teach A1, one of the very first calls I teach is the as couples concept. And the reason is because most of the dancers that get pushed up to A1 don't even know mainstream or, or basic. And, and if I try to be another seminar. If, if, I tried, if I tried to stop and teach them how to do a spin the top correctly, they'd be mad at me. But if I teach them and as couples spin the top, I get to teach spin the top again. Mm -hmm. And they think they're learning something new. And, and that with other calls too. And it's pretty effective. Yeah, I agree with you. So uh, it's almost time for the break. Uh, as I prefaced earlier on when I introduced these guys, I told you they were specialists in the art of square dance calling. But truly, they are legends. Please, a nice hand for my support. This session was constructed mainstream. Thank you all so much for your participation. I got to do a Yes, sir.